Wisconsin Broadcasters Association Hall of Famer Bob Baird ruled Milwaukee's airwaves in the 60s and 70s. He spoke with countless musicians and celebrities over the years. Bob collected remarkable recordings of these encounters, which he's now sharing with the public. Here's Bob. Betty White, an American actress, comedian, author, and animal rights advocate, regarded as a pioneer of television. The first woman to produce a sitcom, Life with Elizabeth. She's been on numerous TV shows, The Mary Tyler Moore Show, Hot in Cleveland, and the favorite of many, The Golden Girls. By the time I got to high school, the kids had made up this really mean nickname for me just because I had hairy legs. What'd they call you? Rose with the hairy legs. <laughs> Betty White was awarded the Guinness World Record in 2018 for working longer in television than anyone else. She received many comedy awards, but now you're going to hear the serious side of the actress. Anyone who loves pets will enjoy this podcast. As we've been mentioning, Betty White is celebrating a birthday today, and she has written a book now called Betty White's Pet Love, What Pets Do for People. How have pets personally helped you, Betty? Well, all through my life, they've, they've uh, provided humor and companionship and comfort, but I think it's when the chips are down, when, when you're in real trouble, that they really come through. Uh, case in point, when I lost my husband, Alan Ludden, um, you just go along, business as usual, and you try to fool everybody into thinking you're handling it well, and you can con your friends and maybe even your family, but you can't fool your pet. And they just cuddled in a little closer and realized that, I had to let the grief out somewhere, and they just helped me do that, but didn't let me just sit and feel sorry for myself. They still demanded that I, that I pay attention to something besides my own problem. I know some of your best friends in Hollywood are pet lovers, too. We read about them all the time. Who are some of the people who uh, dedicate a lot of their time to, to animals? Amanda Blake is a classic example. Amanda works almost... Uh, remember Miss Kitty from Bonanza? Oh, yes, right, works sure. almost uh, 100% of the time with animals. Mm -hmm. uh, Doris Day, of course, has right. long been known as the, the kind of the, the, the prime animal lover. Loretta Swift is always there when you need her. Uh, Bob Barker is working very, very hard uh, with the animal cause all the time. Jimmy Stewart. They're, they're legion, really. Are there any fun stories that you can tell about... Uh, uh, the uh, the stars pets and uh... <laughs> I always love the one about Jimmy Stewart, uh, his housekeeper. They live in Beverly Hills, and his housekeeper was walking one day, and she ran into a, a somebody on the street. The buses pass all all the time, you know, and they're they're always asking questions. And they said, "We understand that Jimmy Stewart bought the house next. I mean, the lot next door to him, so that he could have a ground just for his Irish setters." That, that I. Is that true? And the maid said, well, I think that's the most ridiculous story I ever heard in my life, buying a lot, which I said it. He did not do any such of a thing. They're golden retrievers. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, when, uh, when we picked out our last uh, cat, uh, the vet said, don't buy them, don't, don't get them from an animal shelter. Don't go to the Humane Society. Be sure you go to uh, a dealer uh, or let me find one for you. What do you think about that? Well, I, I see where he, he was saying don't just inadvertently pick up any animal because it's appealing and it may not be a healthy animal. It may cause you lots of problems. But, but on the other side of that coin is those guys in the shelters need friends desperately. Mm -hmm. I think the, the happy medium to that is wherever you get your pet, be sure that you establish an immediate rapport also with your veterinarian, have him checked over, have him... Uh, take the responsibility of all his medical uh, problems as well as his, the joys that he's going to bring. Well, I tell you, we uh, finally, we did go to a shelter, and we did take the, the cat to the vet, just like you said, and it turned out to be the best pet we've ever had. Well, and you know, there's something about taking a, a stray like that, or a, or a, a displaced person, whatever. Mm -hmm. They are so grateful. They just seem to know, it's like, what can I do to repay you? What's next for Betty White? What, uh, what, what do you want to do next, Betty? Stay with the writing situation, and I'm doing a, a vote with Carol Channing, and we're playing the same characters that we've played two times before. So as long as I can keep working, and, and uh, then I'll keep enjoying. But you don't want to leave acting. Oh, my goodness. No. Yeah, that's good. Well, we certainly enjoyed the, uh, the book, Betty, and I'm sure a lot of people uh, are going to enjoy it. Betty White's Pet Love, What Pets Do for People. Thank you very much, Betty, and well, keep I up the good work. Bob, thank you so much, and bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bob Berry. 
Thank you for listening to Bob Berry's Unearthed Interviews. Be sure to subscribe and rate our podcast on iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts. You can find all the episodes at wisconsinbroadcastingmuseum.org. Check out Bob Berry's book, Rock and Roll Radio Milwaukee. Book sale proceeds support Angels Kids Fund and Donate Life Wisconsin. The preceding program was made possible by a generous contribution from Terry Bond.